Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, friends, family, faculty, staff, and seniors to the graduation ceremonies of Edmund Burke's class of 2017. to celebrate the birth careers of these 57 young men and women. They, they have survived the trials and tribulations of the tumultuous senior year, so much of which can be spent looking forward or looking back. There's always something going on in their busy lives, classes, sports, clubs, jobs, senior project, and college <laughs> is ever present in their minds and in the minds of absolutely everyone they ever encounter on the street. <laughs> The challenge is to get them to appreciate individual moments of their senior year and to appreciate the people who are around them. So seniors, I ask you just once more, along with our guests, friends, family, and faculty, to be here now. <laughs> My constant theme with the seniors, so that we can properly celebrate, savor, and appreciate those 57 careers, academic, artistic, athletic, social and extracurricular. So, so I decided I was interested in speaking in graduation sometime before I developed any exact idea as to what I might like to say. It's difficult to condense six years of development and relationships into a single three minute speech. Um, I'd always felt, however, that it was important that I speak a little bit to my experience as a conservative at Burke, because it was one that was often misinterpreted as difficult or very overlooked. Burke has the reputation of being a predominantly liberal school, and rightfully so. Everything from the vocal political leanings of its faculty and student body to its participatory approach to education exemplifies progressivism. And this reputation, to those who are familiar with the work of the school's inspiration, Edmund Burke, may seem strangely contradictory. Burke is, after all, widely regarded as the philosophical founder of modern conservatism. Some have even suggested to me that our founders, Dick and John, made some mistake in their naming of the school. <laughs> they must have misunderstood the ideology of its namesake. This was not the case. Throughout his life, Burke was, first and foremost, a defender of individualism. He dedicated his career to the elevation of independent thought, believing community engagement and critical thinking to be most central to any prosperous society. The learning environment our founders cultivated at the Edmund Burke School could not be more representative of its inspiration's teachings. Our educational philosophy is centered around students' growth as skilled and independent thinkers in our community of immense intellectual curiosity and diversity is that very philosophy's product. Burke wrote that he who struggles with us strengthens our intellect. Our antagonist is our greatest helper. The informed voices who defend or dissent against Burke's majority are absolutely unique within the district's independent school system, despite the fact that the liberal majority of the school might not be. Over the last six years, I have been in constant awe of my classmates and teachers. Their remarkable understanding of the world has produced a level of social and political discourse on campus that I feel incredibly lucky to have been a part of. My conservatism is not despite my environment, it's the product of it. It is not without the open, informed, antagonistic voices of my peers that I could have developed the love for politics I have today. It is through the varied lessons and trust of my teachers that I learned to think for myself. I read a New York Times article recently that deemed the 21st century the death of compromise, suggesting that political and social differences had become absolutely insurmountable in the lives and relationships of the average person. Amazingly, Burke has always remained largely immune to the country's growing divides. It's a place where friendships transcend politics, and no differences in opinion have ever prevented students and teachers from caring very deeply for one another. I have often found my peers to be an inspiration, for if their constant openness and civility is at all representative of our generation as a whole, the nation has nothing to worry about. So, to my classmates, my teachers, and the rest of the Burke student body, I thank you for your open-mindedness, your practiced intellect, and your undying love for learning. Your unique insight and care inspires more in your peers than you might know. I know Burke students will carry on the tradition of informed discourse and intellectual curiosity in my absence. It will always make powerful contributions <laughs> to the legacy of Edmund Burke, Dick and Jean, and our great school. 
I can't stress enough how lucky I feel to have been part of such an amazing group of people. Their individual talents and ceaseless kindness will come to shock the world for years. Thank you all for everything, and congratulations to the class of 2017. Burke is many things to me. A second home, a community of peers, a family. But first and foremost, it is a school. And over the past four years, I was lucky enough to be attending this school. I have learned many things. I've learned about the great works of literature from, through history, from Out of the Odyssey to Watchmen. I've learned the history of this great, flawed country from when it drifted away from Pangaea to the Civil Rights Movement. I've learned the quadratic formula, and I've learned how to discuss world events in French. <laughs> I will not be leaving the school unprepared for the academic hurdles I may face in the future. But when it comes down to it, none of these were the most important of the lessons that I've learned. You can't find it in a textbook, though you may see it in the library. You can't write it on a smart board, though you may see students learning it in the classroom. It's not a sport, though your teammates will doubtlessly demonstrate it during every game. Perhaps most noteworthy, however, is that it isn't a lesson taught in the conventional sense. It is a lesson taught by a community, by friends, by teammates. In short, it is a lesson that I've learned from everyone sitting in these front rows today in their caps and gowns ready to go out and spread this knowledge throughout the world. All of you know this, have learned it the same as me, so I'll keep this final review brief. Everyone's scared. Before I came to Burke, I was scared of all of you. <laughs> How could such a group of strangers become ever grow to be my friends? Four years later, that's exactly what you are, and yet again, I find myself scared. How can I leave you behind, my friends, my family, for the great unknown? The difference between the 14-year-old I was entering the next four years of my life and the 18-year-old I am now leaving them is that I know this. Our fears are not what define us. It's normal to be afraid. If you weren't, you would be pretty dumb. <laughs> but the key is to be more than afraid. More happy, more sad, more angry, more excited, more everything. Our fears are not what define us. It is how we choose to overcome them. Be it joining a team when you've never played the sport. Be it volunteering for a position of leadership with little experience. Be it simply offering a kind gesture to someone you don't yet know. There is true bravery in raising your hand to answer a question in class, in walking on stage and spilling your heart out as an entirely different person, in sharing your opinion on a matter when you're not sure what others will say. I've seen each and every one of you express this bravery, and it inspires me to do the same every day. What sets Burke apart from other schools is that it encourages us not to be unafraid, but to accept our fears and to overcome them. It provides the necessary push over that edge and in turn the support we need until we find it in ourselves to fly. What sets all of you, my classmates, apart from other students is that you have taken these teachings and gone on to teach them to others. In your words, in your kindness, in your humor and defiance, every day you have all taught me and each other to see the warriors and scholars and ourselves and to let them out for the world to see and admire. And for that, I thank you all for teaching me so many things, and among them, the most important lesson of all. Yeah, I'm scared to be leaving work and excited to face my future, armed with this knowledge that you all have given me. Congratulations to the class of 2017. I wish you all the best of luck, and I hope you face the world scared and excited as you have taught me to do. Hi, I'm Aviva. And I'm Orly. <laughs> Wait. I'm Orly. And I'm Aviva. <laughs> We've been best friends since the age of two, and ever since we came to Burke together in the seventh grade, people have constantly confused us. When we showed up for our first day of middle school, we found out that we had been put into entirely separate classes. Apparently, Burke had decided that if we were going to make new friends, we would need to spend some time apart. <laughs> As nervous seventh graders, we found this very upsetting. However, as we got older, we realized that it was an incredible decision on Burke's part for two main reasons. One, it shows how invested Burke is in the life of its students. The middle school administrators not only cared about if we were in the right classes academically, but socially as well. They were not just invested in us as students, but as community members. This level of attention is something that is uniquely Burke, 
and something that defined our whole time here. Two, it shows how Burke emphasizes pushing your limits within a supportive environment. Burke knew we already had each other as friends and therefore pushed us to step outside our comfort zones. They knew since we had each other to rely on, we could afford to be a bit braver. Throughout our time at Burke, we have both tried many new things. Some we were more equipped for than others. Because of Burke's requirement that every student spend one trimester on a sports team, I joined Ultimate Frisbee. <laughs> there, I got to learn how comforting it feels to work really hard, fail, and still have people support you. <laughs> Everyone on the team was nothing but kind as I dropped the Frisbee, tripped, and mostly sat on the sidelines. <laughs> Although I didn't gain a lifelong passion for sports, through this experience, I learned how much I admire people who play sports <laughs> and how much I love theater. <laughs> As anyone who's been in a class with me can attest, I ask lots of questions, and most of the time they're quite unnecessary ones. <laughs> Despite how often I do it though, speaking up didn't used to be something that came naturally to me. I was very, very quiet throughout elementary school, especially in public. At Burke, I felt encouraged by my teachers as well as my peers to share my voice. I felt safe doing so in classrooms of supportive people who only occasionally mocked me. But as much as Burke pushed both of us to try new things, it also allowed us to play to our strengths and become leaders in specific areas. As I mentioned before, I loved theater and acted in every Burke production I could. In these shows, I got to tackle increasingly complex roles and expand my Burke community to different grades. I began stage managing theater productions our second year here. When I started, I was timid about asserting myself. However, as time passed, I not only became more comfortable with the exterior objectives of what it meant to work on a production, but I grew to have a newfound sense of self-confidence, which I built on year after year. So for almost every show we've been in, because of work, we've been lucky enough to have each other on the other side of the curtains. But the best part of the decision made to separate us was that it worked, as I'm sure the middle school administrators knew it would. We've made wonderful new friends here. Friends we love and friends we admire. Friends who are similar to us and friends with completely different interests. Friends who are like family to us. This grade is one of the most loving communities we have ever been a part of. It always feels as if you can talk to anyone, whether they're your best friend or the person you happen to sit next to in math class. Burke has nurtured us, pushed us, and given us a place where we could be celebrated as friends and celebrated as individuals. So thank you to those middle school administrators and to everyone at Burke for welcoming in two best friends and giving them a home. Thank you. So welcome parents, family, friends, faculty, staff, alumni, and trustees to Edinburgh School's commencement ceremony for the class of 2017. I want to thank you for being here today to celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates. And I want to thank you for all the support you have provided our students over the years and guiding them towards graduation. I knew it took a lot of work. Your dedication to the lives of your children has been integral to their success. And your commitment to Burke has enabled us to foster a learning environment informed by our mission to consciously bring together a diverse group of students and to actively foster their growth and development as independent thinkers. Throughout the course of their study and life experience at Burke, today's graduates have gained great knowledge, valuable skills and abilities, as well as a sense of responsibility and commitment to justice that will enable them to make positive contributions to the world in which we live. At Burke, we remain committed to maintaining a unique school community that believes its students should be diverse in ethnicity, family structure, gender identity, political perspective, race, religion, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic status. This diversity is and will continue to be our schools and our students' greatest strength. The heterogeneity of our community expands the lived experience of our students, and it increases their capacity to more nimbly and critically engage in a world that is becoming increasingly diverse. Given all that our graduates have gained from Burke, their experience would not be possible without the care of our talented faculty and staff. I'm grateful for their faithful and steadfast commitment to ensuring that every student in the school is well known and feels meaningfully supported and included in the life of the school. So at this time, I'd like to ask our graduates to stand and to thank our faculty. I also want to thank another important group of people. 
I want to thank our parents, especially the parents of the graduating class in 2017. Your love and care for your children has brought them to this point in their lives, and the school will be forever grateful for the gift that you have given us in being your partners in the work of raising your children into the young adults that you see before us. So at this time, graduates, please stand up, turn to your parents and thank them. And to our graduates, I appreciate all that you've done to influence and uphold our school's mission and culture through your leadership in maintaining an environment that has been welcoming, kind, respectful, inclusive, equitable, and supportive of all community members. Throughout the years, you have encouraged others to strive towards excellence through the consistent demonstration of your impressive intellectual strengths, your exciting creative talents, your notable athletic abilities, and your care and concern for your peers. It is clear to me that you are an imaginative, curious, thoughtful, collaborative, courageous, active, and responsible group, and that you are ready to formulate the vital questions of your time, discover essential answers, and arrive at your own informed judgments as individuals eager to actively engage in the world. Class of 2017, please continue to be your authentic selves. You are at your best when you do this. And please continue to welcome others to do the same by encouraging differences of opinions, ideas, expressions, interests, and identities. And I urge you to courageously declare, and I urge you to courageously declare the worth of others and to stand firm in challenging behaviors that demean, marginalize, and exclude people. And above all else, do the just and the right thing. As you enter life beyond high school, I'm reminded of words written by our school's namesake, Evan Burke, who wrote, never despair, but if you do, work on in despair. And he wrote, no one could make a greater mistake than he or she who did nothing because he or she could do only a little. These words will resonate with you over time because you will learn that life is hard and that challenges will often present themselves. And despite how difficult a moment may be, and despite the despair that you will inevitably encounter, you will have to fully embrace life and the struggles that you will face along the way. Because you have to, and you must, and you should press on and face it all. You also have to believe that even when you think you have little to give, that your actions, no matter how small, have the power to affect change. And you shouldn't make the mistake of thinking that because you can do only a little, that nothing should be done at all. Instead, you have to maintain ongoing faith and remain steadfast in your ability to make a difference in the world. Class of 2017, I stand here in admiration of each and every one of you. And I'm joined by so many in recognition of you today for all that you have done for Burke and all that you will do in the exciting and robust futures that lie ahead of you in the wider world. I wish you all the very best on this day, your day. Congratulations, class of 2017.
Senior year was my first and last year at Burke. Uh, it's certainly unusual for Burke to accept new seniors, and trust me, it's been a strange experience. <laughs> the school that I attended for three years before coming to Burke was a public school called McLean High School. It had a student population of over 2,000, and there were more students in the 12th grade alone than there are total Burke students. <laughs> I was successful at McLean. I was part of a theater program that brought a show to an international competition. My grades were good, and I had a lot of friends. McLean was a good place in some ways, but McLean was also a place that was competitive and unfriendly. McLean was a place where my teachers gave me so much homework every day that I would start it at four and work straight until 10, and even then I barely finished it. I had some great things going for me there, but I was unhappy. I spent the summer after my junior year dreading September because it would mean my return to school. Until one day in the middle of August, I realized something. I didn't have to go back. This realization was mind-blowing, and I finally decided to take control of my own happiness. I'd been hearing about Burke for years from people like Aviva and Jiho, and I'd always jokingly said that I wished I could go there, but it was just wishful thinking until that August. Suddenly, transferring to Burke was the only thing I could think about. And although my parents and my friends told me that it was unlikely I'd get accepted, seeing it was as it was already mid-August, <laughs> I didn't give up hope. <laughs> On September 5th, the day before the first day of McLean, I still hadn't received a final decision from Burke about whether I had been accepted or not. On September 6th, I attended two class periods at McLean before I got a call from my mom saying that Burke had accepted me, and I walked out of the building in the middle of the school day. <laughs> On September 7th, I walked into Burke as the only new senior, and I was terrified. <laughs> I have very vivid memories of my first day at Burke. I remember accidentally slamming my finger at the door of David Panusha's office and having to carry on an ice pack shaped like a penguin for the rest of the day. <laughs> I remember leaning over to Wintana during our first school-wide assembly and asking her if this was actually everyone in the school. <laughs> I remember sitting in French class, which only had five total students, and comparing it to my 30-person French class at the plane. Everything at Burke was so completely different from any school experience I have ever had and it was a total culture shock. I had experiences at Burke that I would never have had at McLean. I played a Nazi in a school play, despite being Jewish. <laughs> I took a class called Sexuality in the Media and wrote a 20-page paper about the depiction of lesbian relationships on TV, something I never thought I'd be able to do in high school. I danced to a rendition of We're All in This Together from High School Musical in front of the entire school. Along with my classmates, I walked out of school in the middle of the day to attend a DC student protest after the election. I am endlessly grateful for the unique experiences that Burke has offered me, both inside and outside of the classroom. It's strange to me now that on the first day of senior year, I looked around at the rest of the senior class and saw a bunch of unfamiliar faces. I've now spent nine months with you guys, and I am endlessly grateful for the time that we've been able to spend together. We've studied together, done projects together, gotten through difficult classes together. I've laughed with all of you and cried with some of you. Nine months isn't a very long time compared to how long most of you have known each other, but I'm glad to have had the privilege to have spent even a brief time with you, although I wish it could have been longer. From the moment I walked into Burke on that first day of school, I already felt like part of a community, one that really cared about me, and that feeling has only grown stronger throughout my year here. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your community and for giving me my happiest year of high school, a senior year that I won't ever forget. It's hard to say goodbye to a place that has meant so much to me. Over the past four years, Burke has become a second home to me. The adults here, even the ones who haven't taught me, and the students have become my family. Burke to me is one of the best schools I've ever attended. I only went to two schools before I came to ninth grade and I was born up. 
When I came to Burke, I went in thinking the bullying would continue, but I quickly learned that was not the case. I knew some people who would be in my class from the events Burke held for incoming freshmen, but I was still very nervous. I will never forget within the first two days, Natanya, who was in my earth science class um, and had attended Burke since sixth grade, invited me to lunch with her friends Claire and Mimi, who had also been at Burke since middle school. I instantly clicked with Natanya. We were inseparable after that, even when teachers tried to separate us. <laughs> All the students who already attended Burke welcomed the incoming students with open arms. I never felt like an outsider, and I quickly grew comfortable and felt like I could be my true self without judgment. I felt supported in everything I've ever done or tried, like starting a new club or being in my first musical this year. Sadly, it was also my last. <laughs> Every day, Damien greets us as we're walking through the commons. He makes it a point to check in with us, not just in the morning, but throughout the day, too. He genuinely cares about how we're feeling and values our, our opinions on how the school operates. I remember when Damien first came to Burke, I was asked to come into his office once thinking I was in trouble, but he just wanted to know how I felt things were going and if I had any suggestions about what he should do as head of school. <laughs> he also constantly reminds us that his door is always open if we want to talk to him about anything. Damien told me once that making personal connections with us, the students, is very important to him. He has become one of the many adults in the building I feel I can go to when I need help or have an issue. Not just as head of school, but as someone who truly and deeply cares and will give me good advice. The positive energy I feel when I walk in and make my way into the atrium motivates me to do well. Damien is not the only Burke adult who makes it a goal to have an impact on us. Every adult, whether they've been an advisor, a teacher, or a friend, has affected my Burke experience in a positive way. Quick shout out to my advisors, Aaron, April, Amber, and Stacy, for helping me get through these past four years. <laughs> for example, I know I can go into either Sonisha, Stacy, Alexis, or Batu's office and they'll give me advice or just let me get my feelings out about anything. I, can always, I know I always will get insightful life lessons from Vidya in the middle of a math class, <laughs> and, and Max always knows how to make me cry laughing when I'm in a bad mood. They have helped me realize who I am and who I want to be. They have cared about me and supported me when I needed it. Thank you. <laughs> no matter what's going on in my life, even if I'm just having a rough day or struggling with assignments, there are at least five people who ask if I'm okay. Even though we may not see eye to eye all the time, we are able to acknowledge that we are consciously brought together because of our differences. We all genuinely care about each other and are there for another during the hard and difficult times. For example, this year on November 9th, after the election results were revealed, I could feel the confusion and fear as soon as I walked into the school. It was very quiet when I first entered the building, which you'd know to be odd if you've ever set foot in Burke. People were visibly upset, even the teachers, but no one had started to cry yet. It was a late start day, so before class started, Damien made a speech about how to support each other and how to move forward. The realization didn't hit me until halfway through the speech and I found myself sobbing. This was the first time I followed a presidential election so intensely and I was terrified of what the results meant for my future. I felt people consoling me before I fully realized that everyone around me was crying too. Having so many people around who shared the grief and fear was comforting because I wasn't alone. We all processed the situation together and made plans of action and move forward. Less than 10 days later, the majority of Burke students and teachers participated in the DCPS walkout. I felt so many emotions that day, but one that sticks out the most is pride that through our many differences, we were able to come together and show that we remain united. This graduating class has taught me that I can have deep, meaningful connections with people who are nothing like me. We put our differences aside and have silly arguments over whether Virginia is better than Maryland, or if Idris Elba is the most beautiful person on earth. <laughs> I am constantly inspired and encouraged to step out of my comfort zone, not only by this class, but by the school. Um, from Jim and Max chasing me down to do the musical because of the lack of diversity in the theater department, to spending hours sitting in the atrium laughing with my friends over the past four years, I wouldn't trade any of it for the world. That's what makes it so hard to leave work, because the people I've surrounded myself with at any point over these past four years have become my family. Thank you to everyone who has pushed me to be great and helped me through the senior year struggle. I so appreciate how you fought for me and encouraged me when I didn't think I would make it. To my biological family, thank you for saying something special to me from the day I was born. And finally, to my birth family and to the class of 2018, don't be afraid to take risks and try something new. Talk to that person you may have just had an argument with but just want to brush it under the rug. Laugh when you can, apologize when you should, and let go of what you can't change. Life is too short to do anything else than make the best of it. We are so fortunate to have attended a school where we are surrounded by people who constantly support us and believe in us. Take advantage of that and don't ever be afraid to fall or stumble because the people over here, the teachers, are there to help you up. Congratulations to us seniors. We finally did it and I know we will all go on to do amazing things. Thank you and I love you all. Hi everyone, um, I'm Maya. And I'm Claire. 
and we're honored to introduce this year's speaker. Together, they've been teaching at Burke for over 20 years in the math and science departments. They've taught most of the members of our graduating class, but are especially important to the two of us. Introducing my dad, Bob Kulowick, and my mom, Judith Anderson. Thank you, Maya and Claire, for that lovely introduction. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Hi, Judith. <laughs> and hello, parents, grandparents, friends, and colleagues and most of all, members of the graduating class of 2017. It'd be really hard to underestimate how deeply honored we are for being asked to speak to you on this important day in your life. Honored for so many reasons. First, of course, because our beautiful, wonderful, beloved daughters are members of the graduating class. But also because of the deep connection we've made in, to this class over the years. We're also honored because of the affection and esteem we feel for our colleagues and for the class of 2017 parent cohort with whom we've become very close. And lastly, because of the connection Bob and I have, the respect I have for the man to my right is immense. And the respect is mutual. Sharing this unique responsibility with one another makes it so much more meaningful. So we are grateful for this wonderful opportunity to say a few things from deep in our hearts to a class that we absolutely adore. Of course, we've had Claire's and Maya's lifetimes to say what we wanted to them and to hear what they wanted to say to us. Now that they and you all are about to graduate, we are delighted and blessed to be given a few minutes to share with all of you some thoughts on a special occasion as you leave the home we call Burke. Judith and I have collectively taught at Burke for 25 years, and that's plenty of time to get to know a school community really well. But to know a school and to love a school are two entirely different things. As parents, our first responsibility, of course, was to our children. And it was our job to find a school community that would nurture them, challenge them, love them, and commit itself to their growth. And the fact that we chose Burke for our kids states as clearly and boldly as possible that we love Burke and are totally committed to its mission and to the vision it creates for our shared futures. It's become almost painfully commonplace to talk about what Burke really, truly needs. Yes, it's a school, but much more importantly, it's a community of people who challenge one another, learn from one another, but in the end, care deeply for one another. So we would ask you to consider the following questions. What specific aspects of Burke will you take with you as you leave? What particular values have you acquired at Burke that you believe will be most important to you as you head to college and adulthood? Is it a dedication to intellectual achievement in the life of the mind? openness to new and radically different ideas, tolerance of differences in our fellow human beings, compassion toward the less fortunate, and a commitment to social justice. All of those are incredibly important, and we believe these values have been inculcated in you from the moment you first stepped into the building. Now, because we can't help ourselves, after all, we're still your teachers until you walk across the stage, we're gonna take this one last opportunity at the front of the classroom to share with you some experiences that have shaped our lives and that exemplifies some values we hold dear. As the adults at Burke who have had the privilege of working with you on a daily basis, we and all of our colleagues obviously have had extremely high expectations for you in the classroom, on athletic teams, in advisories, and in co-curricular activities. And obviously, because we are your teachers, coaches, and advisors, we very much wanted to see you succeed at a high level. But there have been and will be times when you won't exceed, but said fail, sometimes dramatically. So our first message is this. Don't be afraid of failure, because you will at some point, because no one is perfect, and no one expects you to be. The really crucial things are, I think, to never, ever, ever give up, and to be open to learning from your failures and moving on. It happens to everyone, including to Judith and to me. Bob, I think the class of 2017 might have a hard time believing you had a major failure. <laughs> Actually, I haven't. Let me tell you the story. <laughs> in my senior year of high school, I decided to pursue science in college, and I ended up studying chemistry, a subject that many of you know quite well that I've loved since very early childhood. Beginning somewhere in the middle of my college years, my dream was to become a university professor and have a long, successful career in research and teaching. So I pursued that. And then after graduate school and after postdoctoral fellowship, I landed a faculty position here at a university in DC. So the failure? Well, this is it. One of the expectations of professors at a research university is that you obtain external funding for your research in the form of major grants. 
However, after years of submission and rejection, I was completely unable to land the really big grant money I needed to support my research. In short, I failed. And I realized that the dream that I'd had for many years was simply not going to happen. I realized I needed to move on and do something else with my life. That must have been very difficult. <laughs> it was, but at least I got my midlife crisis over early. <laughs> So even back then, I was a firm believer in never, ever, ever giving up. I took some time to think seriously, digging deep into the question of who I was, and more importantly, who I was becoming. And I realized with crystal clarity that what really fed me on almost a spiritual level, what was in fact the main reason I pursued an academic career in the first place, was my love of teaching. Nothing gave me greater satisfaction than helping young people develop an appreciation of the subject I love. And that satisfaction was essential to the calling that I felt to the profession. It is what brought me to Berg, and it continues to give me extraordinary fulfillment every single day. Do you have regrets, Bob? Not for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do have regrets in my story. Let me start by saying that I believe taking a risk means that you have to be willing to be wrong. And that can be a lonely place to be. But I'm hoping that fear of being wrong won't keep you all from acting. Because inaction, doing nothing, or simply going along, that's a decision too. And it seems any time in my life when I haven't acted because it was hard or I was afraid, that's when I regretted it the most. So, your story? Almost there. I also believe we are not measured by anything so much as we are measured by our actions. For they are our beliefs made manifest in this world. No one sees our thoughts, our desires, our fears but they certainly see what we do. To truly understand the significance of our actions, I feel it's essential to embrace the core values of open-mindedness and empathy. And in there is where my failure lies. So here's the story. I was 17 and at the end of a long line at a drugstore picking up a prescription. All the customers seemed stressed after a long day at work and were demanding and impatient. The man behind the counter was calm and respectful until two of us remained. The woman in front of me appeared to be from another country. When it was her turn, his whole demeanor changed. He was rude and condescending, and in the middle of helping her, made her wait while he chatted about nothing to a fellow employee. I felt terrible for her and outrage at him. I wanted to say something that would make him ashamed of his loathsome behavior. I wanted to tell her I know that I see and know what he is doing. I want her to tell her I'm so sorry. I didn't. Instead, I just st stood there and I left feeling ashamed. You must have felt awful. I did. Because while I was open-minded and empathetic, it didn't matter. I didn't act in a way that brought my beliefs into the world. Instead, it's my inaction, the thing I didn't do, that continues to resonate so strongly with me still today. I've tried to make my peace with it by holding it close and consciously making different decisions to use my voice and to act. So what we hope you take from our stories is this. The question to ask is not what has Burke made you, but rather who has Burke helped you to become at this point in your lives. And this becoming, which you build on each day through what you actively do in the world around you, is a continual process without any discernible or perfect endpoint. So our hope is that you will engage in this process bravely and fully and never stop becoming. So to recap, don't let the fear of failure keep you from going after what you dream of, but when you do fail, learn from it, grow, and move on. Inaction is a decision in and of itself, which, like action, carries consequences for you and for others. And finally, remember that becoming who you are is a lifelong process informed by your failures, successes, and actions. So now comes the hard part, saying farewell. Members of the class of 2017, Bob and I and all of your teachers have so, fond, so many fond memories of you. We can assure you, though, we will let go of the homework you lost, <laughs> the essays you didn't write, the lab reports you forgot to do. We'll forget about, or at least laugh about, all the times you were late to class four days in a row. <laughs> somewhat less than cooperative in class, or in fact, not actually awake in class. What we will remember are those things you did and gave to Burke in your years here that have made this a better, richer place. 
The times you asked the insightful questions that sparked meaningful discourse in class. The times you pushed yourselves to go beyond what you thought you were capable of. And the times you were there to provide academic and much more importantly, emotional support to your friends when they really needed it most. We owe a debt to you, class of 2017, that we will repay by knowing that you will take the values you've learned into the world and actively make it a better and a richer place. Finally, never forget that Burke is a family that you are and always will be a part of. And never forget that all of us gather in this beautiful space on your graduation day to honor you because we love you. Thank you and congratulations. One of the most important factors of a Burke education from the student perspective, one that makes Burke Burke, is the close relationships between teachers and students. The bonds form, the level of trust and communication that is, at least in our minds, present at no other school. That relationship is a two-way street. We teachers and staff gain as much from you as you gain from us. Your teachers know you, believe in you, and care for you. In your time at Burke, you've made classes lively and made us think. You've been athletes, been leaders, been on committees that have been made important decisions for the school. You've done service projects and senior projects. You have made magnificent music and equally magnificent artwork. Class of 2017, on behalf of the faculty and staff of Burke, I say thank you for your contributions to the school, and I offer you sincere congratulations. 